What you've seen out of Kluber so far this spring, how close does he resemble the, the guy that you faced and, and really kind of terrorized you guys for a number of years when he was with Cleveland? Um, I haven't faced him, and, and uh, so some of our guys have, obviously, in, in some live ABs, so I haven't faced him. I haven't stood in the box against him. I've played behind him a little bit, but he's looked good. He's looked like he's on top of his game. Obviously, he's a guy that his ball moves a lot, and he, he's really good at locating it as well, so... Uh, he looks healthy, which I think for him is the main thing, obviously. Um, you know, the last year or two, um, you know, he's had some things pop up that have obviously kept him from being able to do his thing out there. But, yeah, I mean, um, he's uh, when he's at the top of his game, he's one of the best, one of the one of the toughest guys to plan against and, and have an approach against. And um, we, uh, we look forward to playing behind him and having him on our side. When he's at his peak, what makes him one of the toughest guys to face? Well, again, like I said, the movement he has on his pitches, his ability to um, make the ball move both ways on both sides of the plate, not everybody can do that. And with his cutter and his two-seamer and then his breaking ball that he can add and subtract with, uh, he's obviously got a change-up that he mixes in some as well. He um, He's just a tough at-bat, you know, obviously a really, really good good competitor out there and a lot of fun to watch work, and uh, he looks good wearing pinstripes. Brett, last year, you guys did not have access to replay. And this year, you're going to have those iPads. Um, how much do you think it was a disadvantage uh, to you last year? How much did you guys miss it? Um, you know, something that I don't necessarily rely on maybe as much as some guys. A lot of guys um, can't get enough video, and some guys don't like watching any video. And I would say I'm kind of right there in the middle. So. It was just different for me because I've always been accustomed to having access to it when I want it or when I need it. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure how much different um, it'll be with, with the iPads, obviously. I think it'll be available to us in the dugout, but I don't know the exact um, how exactly that's going to work out, but I'm sure we'll find out here soon. But I'm sure it'll be a help. I'm sure it'll be a benefit. It'll be nice to go back and uh, maybe see your previous at-bat, things like that, uh, so that you can kind of see maybe what you were feeling, that kind of thing. and. You know, I think for some guys, uh, they were affected by that that more than others. And, Brett, um, we've been talking to a lot of guys about their relationship with DJ LeMahieu, and a lot of the younger guys have spoken very highly of him as, as a leader. You yourself as a leader, how do you see DJ in that clubhouse and the kind of different kind of leadership that he brings? Man, um, just his he's – very, he's very steady in his approach and his presence. He's the same exact guy every day, and – He's a guy that's not, um, as you guys know, he doesn't um, maybe maybe talk as much as some guys do. He's not very loud. Um, he's a man of few words, but he's a, one of the best I've seen at leading by example in the way that he works and, and the way that he plays the game. And um, it's just been a lot of fun to get to know him over the last couple of years, and he's one of my favorite teammates of all time.